You're listening to the Real Life AI Podcast, the show that invites leading industry and academia experts to dig into the real life applications of artificial intelligence. Your host of the podcast is Tigran Petrosian, the co-founder and CEO of Super Annotate, which is an end-to-end platform to build and manage training data, known as the backbone of AI. With no further ado, let's tune in and find out more. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm very excited to welcome to the next episode of the Real Life AI podcast series. Today, I'm very excited to have uh, David Bagdasarian as my guest. David is the co-founder and CEO at Crisp AI. I've been uh, knowing Crisp already for a while, and it's particularly exciting for me since I've been uh, seeing the development of the company sometimes firsthand and seeing how uh, quickly it became one of the key players in the audio and audio AI space and how much it is widespread all over the world right now um, and how much uh, that influenced us as a company uh, to start and seeing the success of them. So. Uh, David, welcome. Thanks, Tigran Jan. It's, it's a pleasure to be on this podcast. And uh, it's a pleasure to be your guest in particular. Uh, so, so I'm excited to see what we will be talking about today. Perfect. Um, yeah, just to get started, um, can you share what's your founding story? How you decided to start Crisp? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I used to work at Twilio, so I was living in San Francisco and uh, I was traveling a lot to Armenia, where I am originally from. So, um, and every time I was in Yerevan, in Armenia, during summers, uh, if you haven't been in Yerevan, you know, if it's summertime, it's evening, you don't want to be at home, uh, you want to be outside because of the great weather and everything. But my team was in San Francisco, so because of time zone difference, all my like meetings, uh, morning Pacific meetings were evening time in Yerevan. So I ended up, always ended up wishing there was, you know, if there were a button I could click and it would give me some privacy and would hide where I'm calling from. So that was like the natural need. I had a pain I, I needed to solve. So I, I, I thought like why people don't use AI for this? And it was back in 2016. And uh, I, I met my to be co-founder Arto and I shared this idea with him. And you know, apparently he was looking for an interesting idea in AI, you know, and voice to to start working on. So there was a, a really good match at that point. Uh, and, and that's how it all started. So uh, Arto started working on this with our uh, our chief scientist Stepan. Uh, and at some point, you know, in a year after that, we decided to start the formal company and pursue this journey. Yeah, super exciting. Um, I know Arto uh, as well because we were childhood friends. We started together at school and. It's so interesting to see when uh, we were discussing this idea and he was sharing with me. And of course, as every idea initially, it seemed quite impossible or quite uh, difficult to achieve. Can you share, I mean, first, maybe what exactly Chris does at the beginning? What was the original goal and how you make this impossible possible with time? Yeah, absolutely. So Chris removes background noise from conversations like this, right, from online, for online meetings. Basically, it uses AI to differentiate what's background noise and what's human voice and separate them from each other in real, real time. Uh, and we, we have pioneered this technology to the industry in 2017. Uh, before that, you know, state of art noise cancellation was very, you know, very micro, multi-microphone dependent. So hardware dependent, like what we have done, we have removed the hardware dependency from there by doing everything in software using AI. Um, and when you do it with AI, the accuracy and more difficult noises can be entirely removed, unlike if you did it, if you do it with multiple microphones. So that's how we like that's the problem we were trying to solve, but 
the funny thing is that we didn't have any experience in, in audio. So we, we, we decided to approach the problem with AI only, which I, I think a lot of the audio experts consider to be a silly idea at that point. So I always joke that if we had more experience in audio, we probably wouldn't start this company because we would think this is <laughs> either like a really typical problem or just doing it through AI is a bad idea, right? But sometimes, you know, knowing more harms you more. <laughs> so that, oh, yeah. yeah. I can I can certainly relate to that when we started our company uh, straight out of PhD absolutely have no clue about how difficult it is to build business uh, I mean that's one thing but of course having a technology is one thing of course and then building the business product customers uh, fundraising and really the the chances of really succeeding in in an area which is super hot and knowing that big tech companies are building it as well uh that's certainly i can relate because uh you know if we the more you know the more difficult it becomes and then uh magically uh it works when you have a very strong focus about what you do what you want to achieve and you know going beyond what is possible um i can i can certainly relate to that um can you share more a little bit about how you're leveraging AI uh, with Crisp and why you feel like your technology is best in the market? Or Because I know that there are other noise, noise canceling tech. Sometimes even Google Meets and Zooms are trying to incorporate uh, yep. around that. Yeah. Can you share more about it? Yeah. Yeah. So like from day one, we were very serious about, you know, um, quality of this technology. You know, the, the difficulty when it comes to voice and audio is that our ears are very sensitive to any artifacts, right? Or any, any uh, like too much suppression uh, that you might introduce. So while it's easy to have some early result in noise cancellation with AI, uh, it, what, what really is difficult is, you know, making it usable. So production quality, mm -hmm. uh, and so that that's that's the gap, right? Like there is a there is a big gap there, and uh, from or like when you process voice, obviously you want to understand whether you have impacted the the voice itself or not, right? Because if you degrade the voice, it's not going to mm -hmm. be usable, and it's uh, it's really hard to not degrade the voice because of the difficulty of DSP and math involved here. So uh, there are some metrics in the world uh, that the, uh, the audio industry has been using or the voice industry has been using uh, for many years. And uh, like I remember like very, even like very, very early on like when we had tiny funding, we, we found this you know, great company out of Germany, uh, Head Acoustics, which was the best in the world when it comes to these tests. And we you know, partner with them to run tests and understand what's our uh, objective uh, measure uh, uh, metrics, right? For voice degrad degradation and uh, noise cancellation. So, and, and from there on, like we have been constantly running these uh, metrics uh, and, and also running our competition, competing technologies through these metrics. And uh, like, that's what sort of, gives us a lot of confidence that what we are doing is you know very high quality and is the best out there in the industry um and you know you might think that it's noise cancellation we do it once and that's it but that's not really the case like we continue like it's, this is like almost a sixth year and we continue improving this technology because uh, yeah there's so so many noises uh, that we have in real life um, and some of the noises are very close to human voice, so it's, it's really, really difficult to differentiate them. Um, and what's also very difficult is to, if you want to separate your voice, right, the primary speaker voice from a background voice that is very close, that's another sort of variation of the problem that we have, we, we have solved and continue improving it. So, um, so the topic is really 
sophisticated, but we have very strong, you know, tooling for comparison, for uh, benchmarks and so on. Yeah, I, I can absolutely relate because I remember when pandemic just hit uh, and I, we just getting started working from home. Um, I believe Chris was known before that, but uh, I felt like this was one very inflicting point where so many people started working from home. And then, of course, at home, there's so much noises. The dogs are barking, kids are crying and uh, outside there is some construction where any kind of noise was so annoying to hear and not only for the other side, but also for the listener or for me as well. And that was a kind of a game changing for me when I started working from home and I really felt like I haven't even left, left the office. And uh, I can imagine this also bring you a lot of users right away. Uh, can you share how was that experience? Because, you know, uh, suddenly you have triple 10x more users in a very short time yeah. how you handle this load generally it's kind of a more of a startup question rather like a technology question sure sure yeah it's it's interesting like right? uh, we were we launched our product out of beta but actually it was like really first time live it, it went live in june uh, 2019 so uh, almost eight months later or nine months later, COVID hit. And a month prior to COVID, like we, we had, we have we hired our first sales, uh, you know, person, right? So we were sort of ready, but we were not ready, really. Uh, we, we were just lucky uh, in a sense that we had some structure in place when this all started right and and you're right like when people went home during covid there was no solution for removing noise and a lot of people started looking for such solutions and we already had like seo in place they, they found us so sort of sort of ready for that right um and like the nature of crisp is that you, you don't know right now that i'm using this right so it doesn't unless I start showing it or promoting with my word of mouth, right? Uh, you won't know. And a lot of people started doing that, right? It, because it was a very magical experience. They have never experienced it. They have started to tell others, their colleagues, their partners, you know, just, you know, so on social media and all that all started, you know, a lot of new signups for Crisp. And uh, not only signups, but uh, we have been awarded with, you know, four or five awards in 2020, like, you know, AI companies to watch, like best at 50 AI companies, right? Or, uh, you know, on cloud, cloud AI companies to I don't remember already the, always, the name of the mm -hmm. award. And then a Webby award, and then, uh, uh, you know, most one of the most innovative companies out there, and, and then a Gartner cool vendor. So, so lo there was a lot of love coming from the industry, and mm -hmm. it was uh, it was it was awesome. Right? Great time for if you're if you're a, if you're building a startup. You know, that's what you want, right? That's you know, you feel mm -hmm. the startup growth. And yes, like everything grew like 10x uh, and, and more, uh, and a lot of things broke, right? Um, but it's interesting, like one example that I vividly remember, we have signed our first B2B deal uh, within three days of, you know, it was our wow. first B2B, B2B deal. It was like, I don't, I think it was like $50,000 or something, right? Which was like a month prior to that, we, we hired our first salesperson, right? A lot of, a lot of interesting stuff happened in 2020, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's very, very exciting. Um, uh, so will you touch a little bit about users? Can you share more about what are the main users for crisp, uh, on a B2B side on B2C side? Yeah. And that's, that's a good question. I mean, when we, when COVID hit, we didn't even know, uh, who our 
who our users should be, right? Like we didn't, we were not clear yet. Uh, we had some understanding of it, like through were like uh, remote workers, which was a, which was a thing, but very new thing. Uh, and it became a thing after COVID, right? Or, um, you know, uh, like there were a lot of online teachers that, that were happily using Crisp. But is, was that a segment that we, we had to focus on, right? There were pretty much because noise cancellation is such a universal problem. Everyone needs that, you know, everyone has the pain. Apparently some people have higher pain than, than others, mm -hmm. which was very difficult to understand during COVID because everyone was having like a big pain. So that that's good and bad because it, it, it's a large audience, but in the same time, it doesn't let you focus, right? Having an ICP is so important, right? Uh, for, for the focus of the company, especially in B2, well, even if you're in B2C, that's the case. So uh, like today, uh, CRISP has a lot of traction uh, in call centers. When, when, I when I take like B2B, clearly, lot of pain in call centers this is not this hasn't been a new problem in call centers it has accelerated because all the old solutions were just impossible because the agents were working from home right so uh, that was that that's a big use case you know it continues to grow for us uh, and sales people like people who have external calls uh, have higher pain because they care more about professional calls and so on uh, but we have a lot of usage for internal communication within the companies as well, right? Whether those are, you know, the, just developers talking to each other or pretty much any team, right? Uh, that is uh, doing like online calls internally. Yeah, it's it's uh, so cool to see how widespread the applications uh, can be for such technology. From the first side, it might look simple and really understanding how much difficult it is actually to clean, have a, such a clean uh, noise cancellation, which which is uh, which I'm I'm so proud you guys have achieved and continue to improve. But what I want to focus more next is the Crisp 2.0. Uh, I'm, I've seen very exciting announcement lately. Uh, maybe I will let you elaborate more what Chris 2.0 is and, uh, you know, take it from there. Sure, sure. Yeah. So look, uh, the way Chris works, it, it's an app that you install on your laptop uh, and then you configure it as your microphone and, and speaker, right? Uh, you can do it uh, on the system or you can choose it from the target application like like this uh like podcastle that we are using right now or mm -hmm. like zoom or teams or any other one right? so out of the box chris supports hundreds of such applications right applications which work with the microphone basically are compatible with chris and we always thought that all right like we are within the conversation we are making the conversation better like more communication more effective by removing the noise and as a as a company our mission is to make all communication in you know, all voice communication more effective so what is the next thing that we want to do and clearly when we, when you think about communication voice communication which is essential for humanity right like we have been like everything starts from voice right really whether that's business or other uh, especially in business communication. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and you can break it into like two parts, whether like first part is during the meeting communication, what happens during the meeting and then post meeting, right? Because uh, why post meeting? Because there are certain things you discuss and there are action items, there are follow-ups uh, to that meeting. So both we are considering part of the voice communication. And when you and then when you zoom into the voice communication itself, there are so many things right there, like uh, that that can make our communication better. Uh, that starts from, you know, the clarity of the audio and voice, right? The quality of voice, and it goes to understanding, like, you know, understanding accents, understanding the language, right, uh, of the other person, and and then it goes to uh, like effective sort of conversation, which is 
how you say things and are you to the point or are you using are you, are you too verbose right so there are mm -hmm. so many things you can improve by not just reporting back to the user but but suggesting and suggesting why the conversation is happening very interesting space so uh, and, and 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 all of that is super interesting for chris right Every, everything in that space is super interesting for us. Again, because it, it sort of goes hand in hand uh, with our mission. Now, we always wanted to get into the content of the conversation so that we can create more value, help our users better. And, and like the way we have designed Chris, and this is pretty important, we have designed our technology to run on device like we don't we never wanted to see the voice recording or voice conversation audio conversation in our servers that's another thing that is very special about our technology right it runs on your device and does this all this magic now having said all that we started working on uh, transcription technology speech to text technology a while ago right and the criteria for us was to do the transcription on device rather than uh, you know sending the audio to our cloud and, and doing that like like others are doing in the industry so um and it, it, it it's it's a really difficult problem to do it on device and i'm not even sure if there are other companies doing this uh near real time uh, and that's what we shipped uh, a week ago right or 10 days ago um, so basically, we have incorporated speech-to-text uh, technology inside Crisp, and now when I'm speaking in the conversation uh, or like in in a call like this, all the conversation is being transcribed uh, for me. We are not recording the meeting. We are not pretty much touching the audio, right? Or we are not saving the audio anyhow. But once the meeting ends, we generate the summary. And discussion items for the conversation and we do it in such a seamless ux where you don't have to add a bot to your call which is a weird awkward you know experience right it just happens i don't do anything and, and all my conversations are summarized for me for my for my later use um yeah that's that's what we have launched 10 years 10, 10 days ago and uh, we have big, big plans that we're gonna add on top of this uh, down the road. Yeah, this is this is so fascinating. I I can uh, see this problem for myself uh, taking notes while speaking and while listening to the uh, speaker and understanding what they say and reflect to it. It's a really difficult problem, and I was facing that. And then having that notes properly managed in, in a paper or in some documents and then able to find the right info and summarize this was really a nightmare for me and uh, as i started leveraging more and more with crisp uh, lately i could see how much uh, life-changing <laughs> event was that for me so i can imagine so many people start using and really seeing that big change in their life uh with with this uh, transcription and notes taking and summarizing can you share a little bit more about the summarization part are you leveraging any generative ai applications and how you're leveraging that since this is such an exciting uh direction of ai lately yeah absolutely so we are we are using the latest you know llms for this uh and um so surprisingly the quality of the like we always had this vision right, that we need to summarize the calls um, and, and generate notes and everything a year ago this wasn't we, we thought you know th the industry is far away from this and uh, we were even considering you know starting building our technology here and seeing wh whether we can make any progress or not but within the last you know, six months that has changed. I think after chat GPT, people realized more what the, the possibility is, right? So I would say that I'm very surprised by the quality that uh, uh, it produces. Uh, you need to spend a lot of time on 
proper prompt engineering and everything, right? To, for, to sort of tune it to do this right for this use case. But the quality is just amazing. And I can see that, you know, it, it's gonna get more better and better over time with, again, as I said, like with, with proper prompt engineering and newer versions. So, so yeah, uh, and, 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 and furthermore, like, I think you can use LLMs for more things than just summarize, uh, summarization. They're just super clever, you know, technologies that are still going to create a lot of, you know, make a lot of people surprised on you know, how, how many new things they can do uh, through that. So we have big plans around LLMs and they're super excited about them. If it's not a secret, can you share some of the big plans, next steps for CRISP? Look, yeah, as I said, like everything related to making the conversation, online conversation more effective is interesting to us, right? And, you know, it, it's, there, there are certain things that are, that you can count, like understanding accent, different accents is a pain. Understanding different languages is a pain. Uh, understanding or uh, like generating like really high quality summaries and action items and follow-ups is, is a pain. And then um, understanding like, and, and then multiply that by team. So sort of when you have, a, when you are in a company and scale it to the company's pains, right? So yeah, it's just like, I think that's like, I just shared like a 10 year roadmap with you <laughs> of what you can build <laughs> uh, for, <laughs> for, for both individuals, but also for enterprises, right? Uh, yeah. and, and doing this across the company and di different devices, different use cases. That's, there's a, there's a lot here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is certainly so exciting uh, to see already what we can do with noise cancellation, the meeting assistance, transcription, the summary, and just imagining all that coming up in the next few years is just mind blowing. Of course, we all are so mind blown with chat GPT and other generative AI tech and seeing that coming to those technologies is just going to make our lives so much easier. And I want to thank David so much. Uh, with crisp to making this a uh, big part of our lives and making our life easier making in a way that is uh, very user friendly very secure for us for our data and then constantly pushing the boundaries to the levels that was not possible before i'm i'm very excited to have david as our guest in this real life ai podcast uh, just to summarize today we've talked about crisp its founding story the technology around noise cancellation, the the CRISP 2.0, how it not only cancels the noise, but also transcribes the voice, uh, cre creates some summaries and some follow-up steps for you, and then what comes next in the future. So stay tuned with CRISP, uh, use CRISP, and uh, make sure that uh, your life gets better with CRISP. Thanks, David. Thanks, thanks a lot, again.